The last uh, agenda item then, or the last main item, is the victim satisfaction update. Mm -hmm. And um, clearly, again, this is something that uh, we have reviewed over a period of time. And uh, obviously, the support for victims and witnesses is a key priority within the police and crime plan. So, um, you know, from myself and this office working with uh, West Yorkshire Police, we have uh, done a number of things around working with partners, victims, um, within criminal justice, members of the public, uh, but, but clearly uh, there are some issues around the sort of direction of travel with this, but I'll, I'll hand over to you to, uh, to update. Okay. Well, the, the report um, un unpicks in some detail around, around victim satisfaction. I think it must be just sort of noted at this point that often we would look at victim satisfaction, that's how satisfied somebody is after an encounter with us. We would, we would look at uh, our confidence data at the same time, uh, and obviously we've not had the confidence data. I know there are plans ahead to start that again, yeah. but I think when we get that back, it'll be a really useful addition to the district who look at it effectively yeah. hand in hand around satisfaction and then how confident would somebody be if yeah. they were to contact us. So yes, and what you're referring to there is the surveys that we send out from this office and yeah. uh, basically what I uh, what I said at the t after being re-elected back in May of last year, I just think, think we needed to look again at the survey as it was mm -hmm. and make sure that it was up to date and it was going to give us the sort of evidence and the, the, the information that, that is most useful to us. So that survey has now started to go back out. I think it's, yeah, yeah. 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 So, it's called the use. Yes, so that information will Correct. start to come in very shortly. That, that certainly will be a welcome addition yeah. to go hand in hand effectively. Yeah. Okay, so what, what we see from the report then, it talks about um, the number of people that are surveyed and, and it looks at victims of burglary, violent crime, vehicle crime, hate incidents and antisocial behaviour. Uh, we have had plans afoot um, with the Home Office just around expanding that somewhat, more to take in vulnerability, domestic abuse, uh, victims of serious sexual offences. As yet we're not there, but I actually think when we finally get to that point, it will make this data far more meaningful as opposed to the old um, you know, offences of burglary, violent crime, vehicle crime. It'll re refresh it and bring it up to date in line with vulnerability. But, but we haven't got that data at the moment, we're still on um, you know, th th those categories. Um, it does give good coverage though, at 34% of all crime and 10% of, of the non-crime incidents. Um, so we do get um, a, a, a wide range and a meaningful uh, data sample. Um, likewise, because it's random, we don't get data from just one area or one victim type. It goes across the range in relation to victim profiles, in relation to districts, uh, right down to neighbourhood level, and also all the crime types I've just outlined. Um, so the report uh, covers up until November 16, um, but the iQuanta data, the national data, is up until only September 16, so we're just waiting for a little refresh on that. Yeah. Um, and we use this data on a regular basis at our force accountability meetings, which are monthly, and then the local accountability meetings, which are um, uh, uh, monthly as well, and I'm currently in a round of those with the, with the five districts. Just, just moving through the report then, um, the, the, the report outlines around um, victim satisfaction and being in, in a number of areas, but in relation to... Um, service delivery, ability to take calls, ease of contact and, and speed of arrival, what actions we've taken and how well we kept the members of the public up to date uh, and the way they were treated. So there's a number of areas and a number of question sets which unpick that. Just, just a little bit of a help warning, sometimes the satisfaction data doesn't correlate with the call handling data. So for example, speed of arrival, we may, we may um, get a, you know, a, a low grading from the satisfaction data, but actually we do get there very quickly in relation to how quickly we get to, to the calls. So sometimes there's not always that obvious yeah. read across. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's important just to point that out. Um, the, the report highlights uh, that we had, were in a very, very good position with this a number of years ago, but we just keep seeing month on month, you know, a half a percent or a quarter of a percent dip month on month, um, it, in line to some degree with other forces, but not completely. 
So currently, um, out of the eight forces in our Iquanta group, and our Iquanta group obviously South Yorkshire, Northumbria, Lancashire, South Wales, GMP, Notts and West Midlands, we're currently um, fifth out of eighth. Um, and then overall nationally out of the four, 43 forces, we're 25th. So I suppose the summary of that is we're mid-table in both, but we used to be far higher than that a number of years ago, and we've just got these little slips. Um, when you look at it over 12 months and you add these half percents together, it's down around 5% over the last 12 months. So it was very high, 86%. We're now on 80.6%, so it has come down that, that 5% or so. We've had falls in relation to both our BME population and our, our white population, albeit the sample size for the BME population is smaller yeah. uh, than, than the white uh, population, as you would expect, because of the makeup of our communities. But when you drill down into the data, um, and whilst there are our slips, the, the, the issue really is in relation to vehicle crime, where we've seen the biggest dip around um, satisfaction in relation to vehicle crime uh, and that's in relation to the actions we take but also keeping those victims um, informed. So, so when you look at that um, vehicle crime and to set a bit of context around vehicle crime, last week for example we had over 400 uh, vehicle crime offences, uh, three quarters of them are usually theft from motor vehicles and about a quarter are theft of motor vehicles, so you're talking about 60 offences a day, so it's a big um, group of offences yeah, yeah. Yeah. that make the difference if that makes sense, so it is vehicle crime, that's certainly where our focus is going to be uh, moving forward over the next few months and, and year. Uh, so when you, when you look at it uh, in detail, uh, we have gone from a position <coughs> where we would have had quite a lot of staff um, on, and officers on restricted duties, uh, who were maybe not able to go out on patrol, who would um, ring people back, keep people informed, um, but a lot of those people now have either been medically retired or have become well again, are now back out in the community in a front facing role. So we have gone from this larger back office of staff being, being deployed in one way to actually now being fully fit and therefore you've not got those people making those phone calls, providing updates as much as we could have had um, previously. And we do have some gaps, as you're well aware of, in relation to some of our officers and some of our PCSOs as well out in the community. Um, so, so that in line with um, our, our drive to handle calls more efficiently around our result without deployment, so to be able to deal with something over the telephone um, for non-urgent calls has had an effect. Uh, but actually I think a lot of it is in relation to managing expectations of our, of our community and our victims of crime, and particularly those, those um, vehicle crime victims, around what, what they can expect. Um, uh, and that's not to say that they shouldn't have high expectations, but actually, if a vehicle's being stolen off the driveway and there's nothing there for the officer to see, no obvious lines of inquiry, house to house, etc., or CCTV, then the officer probably wouldn't attend um, that type of call. We, we better need to use uh, social media, I think that's accepted in the report, um, email, other, other alternative methods, and one element of the report talks about us not taking phone numbers um, and around 8% of, of calls that come in. So on around 8% of calls that come in we don't take a phone number, which then makes it incredibly difficult to get back in touch with someone if they're not on emails. Not everybody has an email address. Um, and then obviously we have to send a letter, etc., which is costly uh, and not as efficient as an email or a quick phone call or text. So areas which we are um, looking for improvements in, uh, in relation to stabilising this half a percent reduction month on month and, and stabilising it and then hopefully building it back up, is in relation to our VCOP system, so the Victims Code of Practice, uh, where we can do that automated with some changes in there. At, at the moment, whilst our VCOP performance on paper looks very, very good, um, if somebody has tried to make a phone call to someone or get contact with them and they haven't been able to, it shows the positive, it shows the green tick effectively. But actually, a member of the public, if they've not been in and we've not been able to leave a message, wouldn't even know. So actually, it's just, it's just false accounting, really. So we need a change in that. Um, the handheld devices, which I know you've had a briefing on, again, they need an update on them to be an upgrade on them to be able to use the VCOP system on them as well. 
um, and we're having a, re a real push with that. But actually, I, I think that the Force Crime Management Unit, which is the new unit uh, that sits with, with Tom Donoghue um, in, in, in the contact world, will actually make a difference here because it will give parity of service delivery across the five districts as opposed to everybody doing a little bit different. Uh, and the report does talk about um, some early improvements with the Force Crime Management Unit. Having, having spoke with, um, with Tom Donohoe in the, in the contact centre and with Chris Joyce, who's our Crime Prevention Officer, um, about this managing expectations and trying to signpost our community and our victims. At paragraph 35, it talks about a, bit, a vehicle crime victim support notice, which is effectively a, 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 a information give around what to expect, around um, who, 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 other avenues to contact, or crime prevention advice, and certainly Tom is really keen to, to get that out but for crimes that his staff put on in the contact centre. Uh, and that's it probably in relation to the report. Just, just to add on as well around the, the staff that we've had, you know, the vacancies we've had over the summer period and some real challenges, also demand has gone up and we have seen demand go up in relation to 999 calls and in relation to the 101 calls as well. So when you take all that into account, um, whilst it's not where we want to be, um, I can understand why we have had this dip, particularly in vehicle crime over the summer months. Okay, uh, thanks Angela. I mean, there's a lot of uh, sort of food for thought and, and, and I know it's not an exact science, no. a lot of this stuff as well. Um, I guess one, one of the, the, the things that just occurred to me while you were giving that update was um, as we start to increase the neighbour policing footprint officers coming in, um, is there, has there any thought been given to notifying those more locally based officers if vehicle crime has occurred on their patch and for yeah. them just to make, you know, pass, if they're passing by, yeah. to just to call in and, and, and talk to, to, to a victim? But they've already, well, yeah. I've, I've done two of the local accountabilities so far this week, at Leeds yesterday morning, Wakefield yesterday afternoon, and both those <coughs> districts talked about, whilst there may be a drive to resolve without deployment, so the, the empty space on the drive, there's no point actually, you know, sending an officer to that, actually what they are now doing is on the handheld devices, letting the PCSOs know for that particular ward that a crime has taken place, so therefore, you know, whilst they're not going to go and deal with it because it's already been dealt with and recorded, just you know, a quick knock on the door uh, to say to the member of the public, we're aware your car has been stolen, we're aware that it's on the, the system, the AMPR system, it's been circulated, yep. have you got everything you need, have you got your crime number, are you okay? That sort of do follow up door knocking, there's no reason why the PCSOs can't continue to do that. Yep. And obviously with the stabilising of those numbers as well, of our PCSO footprint, that will certainly help us moving forward. Yep. So that's about reassurance, it isn't is. it? Yeah, it yeah. is, and that visibility. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, and what, what they've said in Wakefield is even if they can't get to all of them, pick out the elder, more vulnerable uh, victims of crime and at least try and get round those on, on, on yep. the patrols. Okay, thanks for that. Um, do you think there's any sort of silver bullet or crucial aspect that could make a big difference around reversing the uh, the victim satisfaction trends? Uh, I, I believe that the Force Crime Management Unit w will help uh, because we've got one group of people there who are taking the uh, investigations and who will be able to give one level of service as opposed to five districts doing it slightly differently. So I think that can only help. And also the, the VCOP system, um, whilst as I say we do perform really well on it on paper, actually you can effectively um, manage manage the figures by because you, if you if you try to call somebody, you know you, you get a, a positive mark, which actually a member of the public might not even realise we've been in touch with them. So we do need that change, but that's a national position. Yeah. Uh, but we've certainly fed it back in nationally via by, by Sue Crawford. I think if we can get to a position where we survey all of our victims rather than just a third of them. Mm. I think we'll see a fuller picture because this was brought in under the Home Office in a different area when burglary violent crime, vehicle crime and theft were a bigger priority in many ways than other areas. I'd really like to get to a place where we're surveying all of our safeguarding uh, work and, and I think we'll get a fuller picture then as to exactly what our officers and staff are doing. So the, um, 
So you just mentioned there then, Andrew, about the Force Crime Management Unit. Yes. Uh, can you just confirm that, that they actually go fully operational? Is it next month? Yes, they do the current training. Yeah, <coughs> go live on the 6th of February. Right. They go the full, full taking course directly from them. Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll look forward to uh, visiting and uh, seeing at first hand the work of, of that team. Um, in the report, it also <coughs> refers to training of staff. Yes. Can you just say what this training programme look, looks like and does it include existing staff or just new recruits? Well, primarily it includes new recruits because we've obviously got you know the 600 coming through in, in, in the last 12 months or will be there or thereabouts. So they have a number of inputs. Um, on, on um, victim satisfaction uh, and they have guest speakers coming in as well to talk to them um, like victim support, neighbourhood watch coordinators etc whilst they're at, whilst they're at training school uh, but then the training that for the uh, FCMU the Force uh, Crime Management Unit has been very intense and that's why it's taken a while to get up and running they too have had training and then locally the, the people teams, the, all the people teams are, are the local teams which are really focused in uh, people development, so everything to do with our, our workforce. So the old uh, district training officer would sit within that team. They, they've already done some training, um, but more to do ad hoc pop training because we don't have a current training day. Okay, so, so it does cover more than just the new recruits? It does, yes. it does. That's, yes. I think that's the main yes. point, thank you. Um, so... Um, the report also explains that districts are now seeking opportunities to utilise effective demand management methods resulting without deployment. You've already touched on some yes. of this, Angela, for non-urgent calls. This enables the force to reduce demand on the front line but will inevitably affect victim satisfaction. What impact assessments have or are being carried out around the proposed changes and how are the force monitoring the impact change in each of the districts? Well, that, in, in relation to the five districts, that would get picked up on a monthly, on, yeah. on, on, on the monthly LAMS, the local accountability meetings. Um, and we have had we have had a, a push to uh, resolve without deployment, if that's appropriate. But every call that comes into Tom's area of business, that is thrive, so they look at the threat and risk and the vulnerability of the victim, what crime type it is. Then when it goes to the local DCR, the district controller, they again look at, you know, can this be dealt with over the telephone or do we need to send an officer? So I believe all that is in, is, is in, in, in place, uh, but of course occasionally we don't get it quite quite you know, right because we're only human. So we are continuously reviewing that, but by having that force crime management unit, that central unit, then it shouldn't be that this postcode lottery. And should this help to mitigate some of the turnover of personnel that, uh, you know, I know we've had this conversation yes. before, but uh, in a sense, uh, yes, I, I understand why people come into the contact centre environment with a view to potentially applying to, to become a full-time officer or move on within the organisation. But in my view, having looking at what we can do to have more stability within that environment is crucial if we're going to make inroads into this arena of satisfaction and customer contact recording and all the rest of it. Yes. Yeah, I mean we've just uh, agreed as a uh, as a force to go to consultation on uh, that very issue about not allowing employees to move on whilst they're in the probationary period, uh, and we've undertaken that. The irony is that satisfaction levels of the CCC as we assess mm -hmm. them are actually very high. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, you know, it's a, it's it's been a problem for Tim's world to try and get stability in there. We're in a lot better place than we have been, and we're going to bring you a, a report to another meeting around that soon. Yeah, uh, because I, you know, I, I have to say I regard those people as the front line yeah. Yeah. because <coughs> they they are. We know that that people have more contacts with the police over their telephone. Mm -hmm. Than they do in reality of per, you know yeah. Yeah. face to face person yeah. to person. Yeah. So it's crucial in terms of trying to get some consistency around yeah. personnel. In my view, I think it's fair to say that the area of satisfaction mm -hmm. surveys where we've got issues is not particularly in that area. It's in the uh, keeping people informed, the perception of speed of arrival, uh, and the actions taken, which isn't those staffed. You know. 
Yeah. I suppose by having the uh, force crime management unit, though, the new, new unit that are currently being trained, they're all people who've applied for that role. They've not been put in just for a month or two here whilst they're on restricted duties, which may have happened previously at the districts. They're, they're all you know, officers or police staff who have applied for that role and want to work in that environment. So the churn there should be far less yeah. than we've had previously, which can only help. Yeah, no, that's, that's encouraging. Um, with regards to vehicle crime then, and, and the vehicle crime victim support notice, yes. as it's referred to, which will provide information around the recording of the offence, crime prevention and other details which would have traditionally been provided through reassurance visits, mm -hmm. notwithstanding what you've said earlier. Have, have any other forces implemented this process and what have the success rates or challenges been and would this be rolled out across the force at once or piloted in a district for example? Well certainly it's going to be um, Tom staff in the customer contact centre uh, that, that, will, that will deal with this so it will go out across the force area. Um, I'm aware that some other forces have tried to give extra information whether it's in a notice form or not I'm not too sure but I know that they've tried to manage expectations, signposts, give victims you know a, a wider information base as opposed to just you know, you're a victim of, of, a, of a vehicle crime. So it will be across the force area, uh, but I've not got any data to say how successful similar schemes have been elsewhere. We could certainly bring that back. Okay, yeah, I would appreciate that, thanks. Um, I think probably the uh, the last question from me is the uh, the report refers to, uh, and you mentioned this, the, mm -hmm. the issue of obtaining victim telephone numbers on a few different occasions, stating that this hinders good communication mm -hmm. and thus can impact on victim satisfaction. According to the table within the report, 8.3% of all crimes incidents are recorded without a telephone number. Can you ask, can I ask what is the force doing to try and improve that situation? Well, by having the Force Crime Management Unit, we'll get, you know, not the postcode lock, but we will get a better crime recording system with, with every box effectively filled in as opposed to not. Um, some people, which I find alien, don't have a, a, phone, a phone, a mobile or, or, or a home telephone number. So if they don't have one, then you, you can't create one. Uh, but there is some um, issues where people have just skipped through and not put in a phone number. Uh, certainly I'm aware of one case where somebody had the telephone stolen from the car, so the officer decided there was no point putting the phone number down because of no phone, because somebody else has got it not realising that they could go get a new phone and the number would be passported across. So some of it will be admin issues, some of it will be that people physically don't have a, a phone, which I find unusual, but it is the case, uh, and some people don't have email addresses either. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I accept there's, there's going to be an, an element within, that, um, within those numbers that mm. don't have, but yeah. I suspect, like you, that most people will have a telephone contact number and or an email address. So... Um, whilst I know there's a lot of faith being put into the uh, the contact management unit, yes. for me this is more around basic, yes. uh, yeah. you know, capture of details by yeah. staff working for West Yorkshire Police. Oh, but we have had as well people that don't know their mobile number either, which is an issue, certainly yeah. for phone store. Yeah, mm. sure, but that yes. this is something that clearly can be improved upon. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I would expect it to be a couple of percent, but not mm. eight or nine percent. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Just in the okay. detail, Commissioner, can I yeah. just page eight? Yeah. And it's sometimes, forgive me, that it's small yeah. text. There are some, you know, some some positives in here. That, yeah. that that breaks down in that chart in the middle. Yeah. The percentage of satisfied white victims and the percentage of satisfied BME, and we're at 95, 93 percent for the ability of the call taker. Ease of contact is 95 and 93. The speed of arrival drops at 80 and 75. But as Angela says. That's not necessarily that we've not arrived in a, in a timely manner, it's just a perception of our speed of arrival. And then it's where the action's taken and the keeping informed of progress, mm. uh, 76 and 65, yeah. uh, you know, is where we're, uh, we need to improve. Yeah. But that question, overall, how were you treated by that police officer, that police staff member, is at 91.8% yeah. and at 90%, there's and a very small gap between the BME and the white. Well, often what we talk about is then when you add them all together, you get the overall satisfaction. But in terms of satisfaction and public perception, 
when we ask them how did the officer or member of staff treat you, over 90% say in a good or a very good way, which I think is reassuring for you in terms of communities and in terms of the actual face-to-face -face interaction, the treatment is respectful, courteous and decent. Mm. Our overall service there is needs improving, but we we'll want the two to get mixed together, yeah. you know, in that sense. Yeah, no, no, no yeah. and yes, I'm, yeah. uh, you're right that, that, that when we start going into the real yeah. detail of the different yeah. categories, there is some really good yeah. performance and, 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 uh, and figures mm -hmm. there. So uh, I take, you know, absolutely take the points that we, we do need to look across the piece. Um, but uh, as you know, that, that meetings that I attend yeah. and meetings that you will attend, mm -hmm. no doubt, that the issue of the, the 101 number in particular yeah. always gets raised and, and, and I know uh, Tom and the staff at the call centre um, <coughs> work, work tremendously hard and do a great job but that sometimes they're up against it in, with regards to the demand and, and like I say the yeah. complexities but uh, we always have to strive to, uh, yes. to, to ensure that people can get relatively easy access to, to West Yorkshire Police at any given time so yes. hopefully the the things that we've talked about in this report today will contribute to uh, improving that situation and obviously as the Commissioner that, that is, yes. is something you know I'm, I'm, I want to see on behalf of the people yeah. that yeah. that, that uh, I, I represent so um, but thanks for uh, pointing that out John. Um, there are no more questions on this item.